my three predictions for 2022. Um, well, let me start with um, the shift to multi-cloud uh, and multiple workloads running you know, all over the network in between all the different cloud providers. That's not a prediction. That's that's happened. Um, what surprised everybody, we think, is that uh, it's not just one cloud or two clouds or even three clouds that most enterprises have moved to. It's four, five, or six, uh, or even more, particularly when you take into consideration um, the uh, kind of SaaS uh, kind of movements of applications. So this is creating all kinds of headaches for, for networking folks because uh, suddenly the corporate networks, the MPLS global networks that have been built together with the telcos are not really very valuable when a lot of the traffic is now moving in in between the clouds. And so we have a big control issue, which is um, non enterprises really know what traffic's flowing in and between all these clouds. Um, so my first prediction is that um, a lot of startups and indeed uh, large companies are going to come into the fore with a lot of new products that are going to basically enable you to manage the network connectivity in and between the clouds, extending to private cloud uh, and to branches and so on. So uh, that ability to, to really kind of lock down what flows in and between the clouds, but also kind of draw and deliver uh, global networks um, really in, in minutes versus um, months or, or weeks um, is, is really going to be a huge change. Uh, and so we'll have a kind of before and after moment, if you like, how, how networks were run and built before and, and how they uh, will get run. And uh, I think uh, 2022 is a kind of big, big break here for, for how we'll see that, um, that transformation change. That's my first prediction. The second um, is really around the um, early deployments of private 5G. Um, and we're starting to see that play out um, with large campuses, with factories, with um, anywhere where you've got a, a really um, intense base of devices. And, and obviously today that's mostly smartphones and things like that, but increasingly it's IoT devices. Uh, and being able to provide that coverage that goes everywhere um, is becoming increasingly important. Um, and so in, in that same moment, you know, if, if the demise of having everything wired in uh, on the factory floor is, play, is going to play out, uh, then um, 5G is going to be an important characteristic that, that really plays into that. And having private 5G will provide the coverage that's needed. So expect to see um, a lot more trials, a lot more... Um, uh, initial deployments of 5G into those types of environments. Um, and then the first, the third, um, the third prediction is, is really around um, the fact that we're seeing AI get built into chips that are then going out and being deployed at what I would term the far edge. So, so edge devices, it kind of ties in with 5G to some extent as well, but chips that basically have compute storage, communication and AI all available in the same kind of form factor are now pretty widely available and starting to get deployed in street cameras, uh, in sensors and in devices. Now having AI um, on chip means that you can do quite a bit of pre-processing um, or at least execute some of the, the, the information so you don't have to back or push back you know, vast amounts of information into the cloud. So there's a paradox. Well, we're moving to vast amounts of bandwidth with 5G. We're also upping the compute capabilities of these far-edge devices, which are getting a lot smarter uh, in order to kind of uh, reduce the, the need to push stuff back, but also to get fast decisions happening kind of at a local level. Uh, so a, a really good example of that would be uh, a, a sensor that's on a factory line that's looking at the quality control of a, of a widget that's being produced and being able to make a decision in real time about whether that widget is good or bad, uh, pushing it one way or the other, um, is really something that you, you've got a very short amount of time for to, to actually make a decision on it and, and best handled locally if you can. So with the chips and with, with, with the ability to then deploy them in, in products, we're going to see those types of things start to show up, um, particularly um, in, in commercial and um, industrial appliances, but also uh, and obviously into consumer space as well. So those are my three predictions for 2022.